dance by mandala Ooh, I wanna take you to Samadhi Superior, don't you wanna be here? Oasis, Apollo, baby, why don't we go? All right. All right. Hey there. Hey. I am Graham. I am Ashcon. And special announcement. Special announcement, if you haven't heard already. From previous episodes. <laughs> yeah. You've been living under a freaking rock for the last week. Because we've been saying this on like every episode. Yeah. But final episode, two hours, end of this month, be there. Yeah. It's on a certain date. <laughs> At a certain time. Which Ashkan's about to divulge to you. November. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> You'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. November 29th is the date. Yep. Let's see if you can guess the time. <laughs> if you're thinking 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific time, then you you're, probably listened to yeah, one of our other totally episodes. Yeah, you're totally correct. Yeah, that was a good so guess. Good. You really, that was really, I'm, I'm impressed. So, uh, so no, seriously, though, be there. It'll be amazing. We'll be yeah. answering live calls yeah. for two hours. You can call. You um, can be alive. Yeah. Y- you can be on the show with us. Yeah. You could be rambling on like we are right now. You can be. Uh, we're going to choose two lucky people at the end of the broadcast. To host the show that we get to ask questions That's to. Right. Yeah. In the future. Yeah. You'll solutions. have to take our names. Like from us? <laughs> yeah. Whose names? And we'll become them. Oh, all right. Yeah. That's clean. Yeah. <laughs> Tidy. <laughs> All right, so today we, that said, join us, <laughs> and we have a question today as well, uh, which is, hey guys, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> starts really excited there, just wondering what your thoughts are about the upcoming recession that'll be hitting us. Oh. What? Uh, someday slash hopefully never. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's like, this guy knows something that we don't. <laughs> uh, any float centers out there go through the last recession and live to talk about it? I think all business owners should be aware it's something that 100% could happen, but how worried should we be? How much should a float center have in reserves? Three months worth of bills? Six months? Nothing? Just live it up and party hard? (laughs) Curious if you're doing or have done anything to prepare for a downturn in the economy. Hmm. Well, we, I mean, we started during, during the recession. Yeah. Like in the... Yeah, kind of midst of it. I mean, not like so that's two, kind of the same. Eight, but 2010 is when we started, and I mean, by all accounts, that was kind of in the middle of, of the recession that was going on. Yeah. So, well, I feel like there's something different about starting in a recession than having a business and having a recession happen. Sure. You know yeah. What I mean, like we just like we had the timeline to start. of events. <laughs> it's totally different. I mean, in terms of how we functioned and prepared as a company, right? Like we didn't, we weren't like. We didn't have a certain level of income that we were no, anticipating. Didn't even exist. Yeah, <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Like, it's a little different. Like, I'm. I don't really feel like starting in a recession. I don't really feel like the experience I got from starting in a recession has made me understand what it would be like to have a huge recession hit us now mm-hmm. on our business. Right? Like, those feel like kind of different things to me. Because when we were starting, like every like everything was new. Like, we had no idea what the right level of income was to expect or, or anything and we were just basing our like what we could afford was how we budgeted our expenses and stuff like that but it does show that a float tank center can survive in the midst of a recession it shows that people yeah. will still want to come in and float at least in certain circumstances yeah and there's you know a recession is just one variable across that like we also opened a float center in a city that hadn't had like any really big float centers in yep. it before and and floating all, itself was really new yeah. and exciting and like this the whole float concept was on the rise at the time so there's there's kind of other things like that that it's that are part of that equation that I, I don't know how to like disentangle we really Really wish that we could just open up a float tank center in a laboratory setting and control for all the <laughs> external environments. So, I guess it's one of those good times to say we're not economists, like we're not professionals in so this we, regard. Yeah, so we like you kind know? of have experience with this, but I wouldn't really say we have experience with this. But you're, I wouldn't you're really just getting, trust us. Yeah, <laughs> you're just kind of getting whatever is about to come out of our mouths. Like that's yeah. and we didn't do any. It's not like we prepare for these questions. We just sort of read them, and that's. <laughs> You know, you, you get what the unfiltered contents of our brains. So, 
Um, that said, I yeah, I would call myself a financial expert. <laughs> so I do have some advice to give. Yeah. So when the recession comes in in 2021 on October 13th, the the best way to be prepared <laughs> for it is uh, I mean, so I I think here's what I think is hard. This is my prediction yeah, of yeah. what would be hard for a float center is that there's a desire running your float center to always want to pay your staff really well. Because we have awesome staff. They're coming and they're working mm-hmm. for us and they're, they're probably like overqualified for most float centers to be working there. But they love floating and it's a cool environment, right? Yep. So we're getting really cool people coming to work for us. And our uh, natural desire is to want to like pay those people more. And when things are good, like that's that's a lot of times what we're doing with money. Like when we have more money coming in, like that like one of the first things we try to do or where a lot of those expenses go is towards raising our payroll and trying to like keep our rates competitive and pay people well and stuff like yep. that or or same thing too if you're if you're a solopreneur or if you just have one staff member and it's you and and a co-founder running things or just you paying yourself also fits into that same bill too you know? yeah so i think the hard thing is that if uh, if a situation arose, if like a recession hit and there was a big swing in how much money you were pulling in all of a sudden, mm-hmm. like that, I mean, that's going to be one of the first or biggest levers that you can pull. Maybe not the first, but like that's going to be one of the things where over the years when things are good, you've been paying people more and more and that money's been going higher and higher. And all of a sudden, that's a huge bill that's coming every couple of weeks. So that to me is kind of the most grim thing I can think of. You well, can, the most grim is just going out of business. Well, yeah, right? yeah, like, you can't can survive it. You, yeah. <laughs> but you can strip down a lot, like if you're, because your expenses are so much tied up in people. Like you can just put in a lot of hours yourself and get back to a place where you were really running things. You know, sixty, seventy hours a week with just your own like sweat, like that. It, you know, I, I just think what's hard about it is that. It's not like if we were to hit a recession, we'd be like, oh, maybe we should just like sell our Porsches. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, like there's not a lot of other room to to cut back on. Like we can't we can't like stop buying salt or or stop buying earplugs. Well, and or... let's let's back up slightly because okay. like the It's just it's all gonna be over. <laughs> like <laughs> Um like so the I mean and and anything can happen, right? We don't like <laughs> The the economy can can go up, it can go down, it can do all sorts of things. Of yeah. course, it can stay the same. I guess is the third option in there <laughs> to just complete that triad. Uh, and so you you should think about these things to a certain extent, and and crafting your business to be able to control for not just a recession, but any of the myriad things that the crazy environment of the universe tosses your way is good. You know, preparation yeah. is is good. And there are things like I guess the the idea here is that uh, a recession will inevitably have some impact on how much money people are bringing in as wages, which means they have less disposable income, which means maybe they're floating less because they need to cut out the part of their disposable income that's being spent on floats, and that's where the recession kind of goes through and starts hitting sure. your float center. And we're a type, we're an industry where. Like realistically, that's going to be something that people cut. Yeah, we're not groceries, right? Right. Like yeah. people are people are going to look and be like, "Well, I guess I can't float as often as I want to." Um, so there there are things to help through that, though, right? The the more loyal your customers are, the more members that you have who are paying every month. Uh, you know, even though a recession might hit and you might lose some members, stats show that you're way less likely to lose people as customers who are paying you on a regular basis, like monthly, than you are to just lose people who are coming in and paying you whenever they feel like it. You know, it's more likely that your casual floaters who maybe came in once every three to four months and just paid full price, like those are the ones who really are likely to have a strong drop off. So one of the things you can do to make your business a little more recession proof is to work on that recurring revenue and build up a strong member base. And, you know, even more than just people who are paying you money every single month, build up people who truly love your business and take care of them and and kind of the more emotional investment that your customers have in what you're doing. As strange as that sounds, that actually makes it more financially stable and more recession-proof in the long run. Yeah. I mean, my plan is just when the recession hits, lock whatever floaters we have currently in our shop in the tanks and then just keep charging their credit card for every float after that. You get this, you get a certain like look in your eye when you just say yeah sometimes. I just know there's something ridiculous coming. But no, also totally viable option. Yeah, that way think, all you yeah, really need is one, Peter Thiel one... is the one who I first read that from, I think. <laughs> Sounds like something you would say. <laughs> um, but so, okay, how much money do you keep on hand? Like how much do you like financially prepare for something like this? So, 
kind of in the in the pre-opening business world, the sort of safe range is generally given as maybe a year and a half kind of runway where you can be, you know, losing money every month and not even covering your bills and you still don't have to go out of business, right? Um, so you can kind of take a, a loss for a year and a half and to kind of weather whatever storm comes along. Yeah, but that's like a huge... Well, and it's not a year and a half of total expenses. It's a year and a half of taking a little bit of a loss every month. So sometimes with to that... keep surviving. Yeah, exactly. And and sometimes what that's equated to, again, all of this is just kind of fictional, like business <laughs> fiction that some people have said, but, you know, three months of full expenses. If you have enough that you could be open, fully staffed, running a fully expensed business for three months and literally not make a dollar of income, that's a nice safety net is also what. So the, the thing about float centers is that I, I feel like it's nice to have some sort of savings built up, not just for the like impending recession that could strike us at any moment, but dinosaurs. <laughs> um, but uh, like the because other emergencies of that scale can sometimes pop up for float centers too, especially construction. Like if all of a sudden you realize like oh boy like I have to redo the floors and all of my rooms like that's that's a serious chunk of change like not only do you have to pay for the construction you have to be closed you got to deal with what are you doing with your employees like you don't really just want them to be like unemployed for a month randomly there's there's all that sort of consideration to make and that those are pretty pretty big expenses or you know like what happened to us once is the city was doing a full like yeah. project in the street in front of us where they were tearing the entire street up and replacing the storm drains that was like three and a half weeks of crazy construction and like we couldn't figure out a way to stay open for it it was just too yeah. much noise so there there are like we're also just a sensitive business to random stuff that not even happens in our shop but around our shop because of the nature of yeah. soundproofing and, and things like that and not related to a notion na- national or global economy but just related right. to what the city decides to yeah. do to tear up sewer pipes they right storm yeah. drains. like that was that was all that happened so yeah, a safety net is definitely you know in, in the circus a safety net is to stop you from falling from the trapeze or something and in <laughs> in a float business it's for kind of anything that can go wrong you know so yeah that same that same thing can can provide you an emergency fund were you to hit a situation like that where a global economic meltdown <laughs> hasn't. <laughs> yeah. But and- I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Again, like we haven't lived through it. Like I do think one of the big differences is when we opened in a recession, all of our customers were people who were in a recession already willing to pay the money to come and float yep. as opposed to having customers and having a recession hit. Like we don't know how many people would all of a sudden decide that that's outside their budget. So, I mean, definitely, you know, try to try to save up a little money, not just, again, for a recession, but for, for other things. Uh, lines of credit, you know, it, it's a great thing to have access to money, even at an interest rate, um, when you need it kind of immediately. So looking into getting pre-approved loans, lines of credit, even, yeah. you know, credit cards for smaller purchases. Like, you don't want to, obviously, yeah, <laughs> to rack up too much credit card credit debt. cards is usually what I hear is good <laughs> financial advice. Don't worry about interest. Well, so here, okay. The other the other thing that's a little bit difficult in terms of real life examples to talk about this is just 2008. It was a kind of a low point in the float industry in general, yeah. not necessarily because of the economy. Like that was just in a lull of of the industry. So there there are a couple of places that were around before that and are still around afterwards and have that experience, but they're kind of few and far between. But, you know, it did impact people. I mean, I remember talking to there's a couple of manufacturers that had been around through yeah. that whole process, and they definitely said they saw a lot less float tanks being purchased all of a sudden. So, yeah, I mean, one of them said it was like night and day. Yeah. <laughs> Just like a, a switch had been flipped, and they went so, from tons of orders to almost none. I mean, it's going to be bad. Like, we're not going to make it. Like, we <laughs> <laughs> uh, No, I mean, so so here's what I think would actually happen realistically to a float center in a recession, which yeah, is— like the the sun would turn bright red— Acid would start raining down from the sky. Dead frogs would pop back out of the earth. <laughs> give their zombie wait, wait, wait. croaks. For zombie frogs specifically. Yeah, zom- yeah, specifically, yeah. All right, so here's what I see happening. <laughs> I think that I think that you'll do better the more general recurring revenue that you have. So again, the more regulars that you have, the more members you have, I think that'll help a ton. And I think that your business will inevitably see a downturn and you'll kind of have to tighten your belt. And that'll be the hardest for people who are just at break even or already losing money. You know, like that's a, a tough proposition to go from losing money to losing even more money every month or from just breaking even to suddenly not. Um, and 
for some, it'll mean that they're just a little less profitable. And ultimately, there will be a big sorting out. You know, for, for a lot of people, they might decide that the business just doesn't make sense and, and they might have to shut down. And for other people, they decide either like they were strong enough and although they took a hit, it's still a viable business or you just tough it out. You know, like there's this certain <laughs> determined, like whenever really tough things have happened to float on, there is. It's like we tighten our belts and we work way more hours in the day and we kind of push through. And so far, you know, we haven't hit any obstacle that's stopped us from from continuing, although we have had really low points in our existence. <laughs> and as a result of pushing through, your business ends up stronger. And you, you can read that in in for almost any type of business, too. Like the ones who go through a recession and survive, they've learned how to trim out the fat in areas where they didn't need to have these expenses, and they've learned how to run a tighter operation. And all of a sudden, when the economy starts turning up, their business is way more successful than it was in the past. And that's not an uncommon story that you hear. So there is an upside, which is, you know, when, when things hit the cutting block, sometimes, you know, the, the bad things are what gets removed and the good things are what survive to live another day. And this is good. You know, we talk a lot about this marketing strategy of using your float tanks as your marketing. This is a time where that is especially helpful. Yeah. Like getting into a place where all of a sudden you have more empty float tanks than you're used to and no money to spend money on advertisement. Like that's when it's great to start filling up those float tanks as your marketing strategies. Yeah, one one hundred percent agree. Plus, there's going to be a ton of stressed out people out there in an <laughs> economic downturn. Maybe recessions so. will be great for us. Like, yeah, people, people need it way so more than out. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it now. Now that we've talked about it, <laughs> the zombie frog sounded really cute. So <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Don't even worry about it. We're going to be fine. <laughs> um, and if you have uh, yeah, if you have your own questions, yeah. head on over to uh, floattanksolutions.com. Slash podcast, you can put in any questions you want us to do economic forecasting on. Yeah, and uh, and we'll do it because we are economists. <laughs> yep. Bye, everyone. Bye.